All right, good afternoon. I'm going to be talking to you about my honours uh, thesis, which is a biodiversity assessment of shark as rock. Uh, this is done to determine if it is a suitable candidate for spatial management under the Integrated Coastal Management Bill. So, shark as rock is located in the north coast of Brazil Natal. It is found south of Salt Rock in Belito and found within the subtropical east coast bioregion. This area is commonly frequented by the public for swimming and snorkeling activities within its man made tidal pool as well as uh, fishing and harvesting activities off its rocky ledges. However, concerns have been expressed by the locals in this area as they, as they have noticed an increase in, harv in harvesting and fishing in this area, and therefore this served as a catalyst for this biodiversity assessment. But Sharpers Rock has been an area of interest since the late 1970s, and in a study conducted by Jackson in 1976, it was stated that Sharkers Rock is an ideal region to establish what the normal conditions of the East Coast intertidal communities are. This is because there's a fringing reef off the coastline which prevents sand deposition onto the rocky shores and its inhabitants. But this information is relatively outdated and no recent studies have been conducted in this area. Well, recent studies of this type have been conducted in this area. Uh, Natal, the coastal regions in Kuzin Natal are also lacking in conservation as only two out of the three marine protected areas actually encompass the uh, coastal regions, namely the Isamangalisa Wetland Park and the Trafalgar MPA. There are, however, seven coastal reserves in Kuzin Natal, but these do not encompass the rocky shore and commonly encompass the rocky shore environments as they mainly focus on the estuarine and mangrove environments as well as um, the sandy dunes and the coastal vegetation. Therefore, our rocky shore environments are left open to over-exploitation. So the main aim of my study was to identify whether Sharkers Rock should be declared an area of special management when conducting a biodiversity assessment of the region and comparing it to other sites of similar geological morphology. The second aim was to provide a species inventory and baseline information of Sharkers Rock, uh, of the tidal pool in Sharkers Rock and the rocky shore environment. And the third was to provide some indication of the use of the area so that the most appropriate management practices could be considered. So an area may be declared under special management under the National Environmental Management Act, Integrated Coastal Management Bill of 2008. And according to this bill, an area may be declared under special management if environmental, socioeconomic or cultural conditions require the introduction of measures to either conserve biodiversity and enhance coastal ecosystems, promote sustainable sustainability to the local communities, or enable the management of coastal resource by, resources by a local community. Therefore, the ICM aims to achieve sustainable um, coastal development using cooperative governance and scientific statistics. So, after an extensive search on the most appropriate sites for research based on the morphology of the areas as well as the accessibility with the sampling equipment, two sites, uh, namely Thompson's Bay and Boulders, were chosen. Um, these fall within clo close proximity to Sharkers Rock as they fall within the same bioregion and the largest distance between them is only 2.7 kilometers. So Boulders is the rocky shore comparison site for Sharkers Rock, and as can be seen, Sharkers Rock is subdivided into two regions, mainly the northern side and the southern side, and um, each side spanned 100 meters across the shoreline. And sampling on the rocky shores was conducted lay by laying five permanent land transects um, from the high shore to the low shore areas, and photocardiacs were then used to uh, determine the species diversity of the intertidal communities. And uh, when accounting for the mobile species, time counts were used in these areas. So looking at the results um, of the biodiversity assessment, it was found that Sharkers Rock had a significantly higher diversity than that of uh, the Boulders comparison site when looking at the Shandamina Diversity Index. Um, it was also noted that the southern side of Sharkers Rock had a significantly higher diversity than that of the northern side. And this may have been due um, to the larger area that the southern side encompassed. And it's been found in previous studies that um, a larger area may result in a higher diversity of species. But um, it was also noted that under high tide conditions, the area was completely submerged underwater, which may have resulted in the high shore organisms being less exposed to the high heat stress and high light intensity, therefore resulting in the high diversity found in the southern side. And as can be seen in the image here, the northern side had a large sandy area in the middle. And because photo quadrats were used, um, the infauna were not taken into consideration, which may have resulted in the lower diversity found here. But it is important to note that um, the boulder site also had a, an extensive rocky platform, but the diversity at Sharkers Rock was still significantly higher. 
So we're looking at the tidal pools within Sharkers Rock, and uh, Thompson's Bay was a comparison site for the tidal pool at Sharkers Rock. Uh, three line transects were used inside the pools along the length of the pool, and uh, underwater photocardiographs were then used here. To, and to determine the fish species richness and diversity, beta remote underwater videos were used. Um, an area usage analysis was also conducted at Sharkers Rock, and due to time constraints, it couldn't be conducted in the other regions. And this involved um, recording the activities that were taking place at all three sites, namely the northern, the tidal pool, and the southern site. Um, and uh, these were recorded over 12 hour periods over two days. So when looking at the results of the benthic communities, um, it was found once again that Sharkers Rock had a significantly higher diversity than that of Thompson's Bay. Um, it was also noted that Sharkers Rock had a very rocky and rubbly bottom, which has been found to be good for coral and algal growth and recruitment. Whereas Thompson's Bay had a very sandy bottom, and as previously stated, since um, photocardiographs were used, uh, the, uh, the infauna were not taken into consideration, which may have resulted in the lower diversity found here. But three main ecosystem engineers were found in high abundance at Sharkers Rock. There you go. <laughs> and these were the oysters and the tall rock oysters, your hard corals, as well as the brown mussels. These are ecosystem engineers as they increase biodiversity and therefore they form an integral role in the intertidal and subtidal communities. Corals provide shelter and serve as nursery sites for um, juvenile fish as well as food for important fish species. And mussel beds have been found to increase humidity while reducing light intensity. Therefore, they create a microhabitat for other organisms. But oysters and mussels in particular are very good water quality indicators as they are bioaccumulators and um, they can be used to test the level of heavy metal pollutants in the near shore areas, which I think would be a great um, use of this area if special management is implemented. So when looking at the fish communities, once again it was found that Shark Rock had a significantly higher diversity than Thompson's Bay, and this may be directly linked to the benthic cover being higher, um, having a higher diversity as a higher diversity benthic cover may result in a uh, larger food provision for the fish. Um, but it could also be um, due to the design of the pools, where Thompson's Bay had a higher wall and a longer rocky platform connecting it to the, uh, to the sea, which may have made the recruitment of fish into and out of the pool a bit more difficult. Whereas, as can be seen in this image, uh, Sharkers Rock was fully submerged under high tide uh, conditions, and therefore the recruitment of the fish into and out of the pool may have been made a little bit easier, resulting in the high diversity found here. So when looking at the results from the area usage analysis, it was found that the tidal pool was um, frequented for snorkeling and swimming activities. And um, this may have been due to, um, oh, and we found a lot of coral fragments inside this pool, which may have been due to trampling. And it has been found in previous studies that um, the trampling of corals results in a smaller colony size, as well as an increase in algal turf. And uh, I feel like this needs to be considered when implementing management options here. And off the rocky shores, it was also found that a lot of harvesting and fishing activities did take place, as well as um, collecting. And um, it's also been seen that the people fishing off the shore were also collecting uh, the intertidal organisms and using them as bait. And it's important to note that these organisms also have a daily catch limit, which may be exceeded if it's not monitored correctly. Therefore, I feel that these should all be considered in formulating the appropriate management strategies in the area. So, to conclude, uh, Sharkers Rock encompasses three habitat types, namely your sandy beaches, your rocky shores, as well as your subtidal environments, being the tidal pool, of which the tidal pool and the rocky shore diversity is distinctly high. And in a letter of support for the implementation of spatial management at Sharkers Rock, uh, to the Ilembe District Municipality and the, and the Kwadukuza Local Municipality, it's in located in wildlife stated that if the area is proclaimed as a spatial management area, this would enhance education awareness as well as uh, create a draw card for tourists. Therefore, not only will the biological communities be benefiting from this area being a spatial management area, so will the local communities. So based on the ecology of this region, I would argue that Sharkers Rock is an ideal region to implement the first fish management area in Kozudu Natal. Thank you.